So just one more minute and then we'll we'll um, we'll make a start. Um, as I mentioned, um, there will be chances for you to ask questions later on. Um, we'll just ask you to, to type in the chat if you want to ask a question and then I'll unmute you to be able to ask a question. I think what we'll do is if we if we make start by the time you're in, you've introduced yourself, Bart, you know, a couple more trickle in. So I'll, I'll hand straight over to you. Thank you very much, Daniel. Welcome, everybody. Um, we're going to be talking today about becoming a 3G advisor. So uh, first off, and I, and I view this in, in a lot of different ways, is you have salespeople out there. Then you have advisors. So moving from a salesperson to an advisor, you move from flogging products to then talking to people about solutions. Mm -hmm. Then you move to the next level, which is trusted advisor. From advisor to trusted advisor is now you're not only talking about solutions, but you're talking about problems that people don't even know how to voice. They don't even know how to come in overall to say, what, what, what do I need to solve? Do I have problems? Okay, well, you don't even know until somebody else says, you know what, you have a problem with the, the paint on the side of your house. You have a problem with your, your sales pipeline. You have a problem with your distribution of your product. A lot of times people don't even know that, especially when things are going really well. Um, then I think you move to this thing that, that I'm gonna teach you about, which is the 3G advisor. So this takes you from trusted advisor to actually sitting on the same side of the table as the other people, as the people that you're helping to buy something, you're going to actually approach the problem with them. So the, the best thing about books and, and speaking and public speaking and all the stuff you're gonna talk to your salespeople about, your sales teams, is, is that nothing is actually new. It's just an amalgamation of the stuff that you've put together. So you've probably heard things that I'm talking about, talk, talk through, through other salespeople, through other sales coaches, smash together and put in your own twist. So a lot of the times when you come out of a presentation like today, just make sure that you're gonna have a list and you're gonna take notes, but always just have that one post-it note, that one back of another sheet, whatever it is, the one thing that you're going to apply to your business today, tomorrow, whatever it is, but instantly because you're gonna have a page full of notes and guess what? You're gonna get very busy. You're gonna do lots of silly things. You're gonna do lots of other things. Clients are gonna call you. The kids are gonna get in the way, whatever else it is, and, and you're going to, to lose it. So you wanna make sure you get that one tidbit that you're going to apply that will change, change your world. So going from salespeople to advisor, to trusted advisor, to 3G advisor. So making sure that my screen works, but okay. So why would you want to listen to me? Um, I've worked in, and obviously you can tell, I live in the UK, but uh, I was born in the US. My accent hasn't changed in the 18 years that I've lived in the UK. I, I own a number of businesses. I'm a director of other businesses. I'm an investor in companies. Um, and I'll talk a little bit later about the different books that I've authored. But today we're going to be talking about my, my newest book, which I, is, is on pre-release, which is The Assisted Purchase. Um, which is what we're going to talk about today. In my financial advice business, I've, I've had over 2,500 clients, um, totaling about 150 million assets under management, 150,000 or 150 million dollars. Um, currently running multiple businesses. My favorite hashtags are networking sucks and hate sales because I hate sales. I like helping people make decisions that are going to affect their life. I hate networking because I believe that in general, people network for their own benefit and not for the benefit of other people. So the more selfless you can become, the better off you're going to be in your own community, in your world and moving things forward. 
the people here that you see in this, I run a thing called the Bull Ring, which is kind of our version of Dragon's Den. We have six different companies that, that usually pitch. Uh, the people here are, you've got Alan there from Grenade. You've got um, Pete there from Roman Originals. You've got the ex-head of Sony there and and quite a, quite a few other people. So these guys are are big names and they're all local. So I try to make sure that we keep it keep it local, keep it focused. And, and I'm happy to be working you know, as part of the, the BEC team and taking things forward there to make sure that you get a lot of great content and you guys can become great successes in your own right. So uh, I write this and this is, if, if it weren't for customers and employees, businesses would be easy because you wouldn't have to do anything. If, if your product was the only thing and it could sit there and just generate millions of pounds for you, that would be, that would be great. We just know it, it can happen. So you have to have customers. And as you grow those customers, then you need to have employees to help you work the business. So I, I don't know everybody on the call and how many are sole traders and how many people are working forward, but you have to make sure that you've got the systems in place that you deal with and that you take things forward to make sure that your business is easy to run. So I want you on, on your piece of paper, I want you to write down what you believe, whether you have customers or whether you have clients in your business. So do you write, write down customer or client? Now, whichever one you wrote down, write down three traits about what that you believe are under a customer and three traits that make somebody a client. Daniel, could you, um, if anybody wants to chime in, so could somebody give me uh, a customer trait? Daniel, if somebody wants to chime in. Sure, if, if, if anybody's willing to, to give an example, um, please let me know on the chat and I'll unmute you to, uh, to share. If you don't, I have, a, I have a big list of them. So if you, if you, want, if you don't want to chime in, that's fine. So cool, customers. If, yeah, we, we've got, so. Uh, uh, so David. David, what's a customer trait? Desire for me. A customer, a trait, a trait for a, a customer's desire. So the customer has desire to buy your product. Yeah. Okay. So that that works. Um, and how about something that, that what would the difference differentiate that from a client? Um. Well, I'm not making it for them i'm making something which i then want them to buy okay that's cool no it's a per perfect example so let's let's get another one so we have we have desire and what we can we'll we'll bend to that back and forth a little bit as to whether that that's a customer trait a client trait or just a trait in general that, that we want to work with so one more do we have another one daniel or yeah, are we just on? yeah Sh sharon would you not like share Sharon, a client trait or a customer trait? Oh, I have no sound, she says. Um, she has no sound, okay. No I, I, can, I can be your sound if you want. If you want to type it, then I, I'm happy to, to read it out. Good. So while, while we're... Uh, a client is more personal than a customer, is what she okay. said. That's good. No, that's great. So... And this kind of, if you, if you look at the definition in general, when you're talking about sales things, customers purchase things. Customers are typically for a store, one-off purchases, things typically of lower value and less touch. So customers are people that, that buy products and do things. There's nothing wrong with having customers. Tesco in general, you know, a grocery store has customers. They don't have clients. Even though they say that they have a client service manager, they don't walk you around and help you buy stuff. Clients typically go better and, and the nomenclature and the word works better with people that want to deliver a service. Whether you're selling products on the end of it is okay, but it's it's people that you have regular regular contact with regular sales and that you can actually interact with them on a more regular basis so customers buy things clients work with you to purchase stuff so now how do we move people from their being a customer if if that's 
to a client if that's what we need to do. If you just have a product like David's talking about and you're just looking to get customers out there and you just want to flog a bunch of stuff, that, that is perfectly fine. It's a volume play. It's a move forward. But if we're going to move that mindset from customer to client, we need to have at least three to four different things that somebody is purchasing from you. Somebody is interacting with you to buy three to four things. They move from a customer to a client. So if, if you only have one thing that you sell, maybe they buy four of them. So, you know, the, the ultimate thing you've got, your the evil iPhone or where, whatever you are, if you're a, an Android person or whatever it is, you move, the first time you buy one, you're probably a customer. But then they start to move you to buying iTunes. They start to move you to buying apps. They start to move you to buying all these different things. So you move to being a client. Even though you're an end user and they don't do a lot of interaction with you, you become a client of Apple or you become a client of, of an Android. So you, you move yourself from purchasing one thing to now purchasing three things from somebody and you become a client. So you have to figure out when you're, working with your customer to clients, what are ways that you can interact with them? They don't have to be big purchases. They just have to be three things that move you from, move them from customer to client. So what is your role in the overall process? My questions are to you, what do you need to do? So what do you need to do to make it so that you can move them from the customer to client? And then who do you need to be? And this is where I start to talk about the, the 3G process because the three Gs are three different people that you have inside of you if you can get the right questions. And we're gonna go through these questions. The very first one is the guru. People come to you and I see, I see James on here, I see Chris on here. So James, they come to you for digital screens. They, they wanna make sure that they can lay out things. Chris, they come to you if they wanna talk about flooring. Daniel, they come to you if they want, because you have worked with people in this, this industry or this area for a long period of time. So there's things that you, you want to be known for and that you can say to them because you've done it for so long that you've been there, done that, bought the t-shirt so they don't have to worry about it anymore. Second person is the guide. When things come up and things change in your industry, things move forward, you need to work with your clients or moving them from the customer to the client. You need to work with them to find the best solution for them. The last one, and this one we'll use the most sparingly, is the gladiator. So the gladiator, and I'll walk you through this. This is where you're working with your client and they've given you, you know, like the gladiators of old, they've given you something to protect, whether it's whether it's their floor, whether it's their business, whether it's their the way that they're, if you're a marketing person, it's the way that they're viewed in the industry or by their clients. That's that's what they've given you to protect. So you're there to protect that if they start to stray from the remit that they've given to you. So I, sometimes, and so we'll work through each of these. Each of these actually has three parts. I love threes. My, my favorite thing is, is energy, time, and focus. So when you're working with somebody, energy, time, and focus. Somebody in their business, if, if they're in their business, their energy is typically their resources, which is money, which are employees, things like that. Time, we only have 24 hours in a day. And then focus is where they want to put their attention. So if you are selling to multiple different channels, so let's say that you have a business that sells to accountants, architects, lawyers, construction, well, airlines, da, 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 your focus goes like this, which means that you, you don't have time to dedicate or focus on one or two or three of those. You start to go like this and you only have so much energy to push out to all those. The same thing happens when you're using or working with your clients or your, your customers that you're moving to clients. They only have so much energy. They only have so much resource, which is their cash, their all that stuff. They only have so much time to go out and find a new you 
find a new product that you deliver, find a new solution that you can help them with. And the more that you can help them focus on what they're good at and not have to worry about what you're trying to help them with, the more stuff you will be able to sell, to help them with. So you really wanna make sure that you're doing this. And as the guru, you can make sure that you're saving them that time, energy, and focus by saying, we've done this before. So I've got a video clip here, but I don't even know if you can hear it. So I'll move it on. It's, it's really good when you're in a room and you can hear this, but the guru is, and I put Michael Myers down here, but the traits of a guru, the thing that I like to talk about here and Theodore, it's attributed to Theodore Roosevelt, but it's people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So when you're talking to people and you wanna move them from a customer to a client, you need to be able to empathize with them. You need to be able to say, your clients or the clients that I typically deal with in your industry that are successful, do this, this, and this. So the traits that you have to hit, have here are empathy. You need to hear that they're, that, you know, the, right right now that they're having time, they're having a hard time paying wages. They're having a hard time doing, um, dealing with remote working with their their people. They have a hard time dealing with work at their house because their kids are running around. You need to be empathetic. Then you need to start asking them questions and you need to ask them questions in a, in a guru sort of style. So in this, I want you to write down one question for somebody, whether it's customers or clients. And I want you to start with, how would you feel if? So the question is, how would you feel if, so if you're talking about how would you feel if you sell life insurance? How would you feel if your family was protected if something happened to you and you weren't here? How would you feel if they were taken care of? If you're selling a car, how would you feel? And if, if, it's, if you're doing the, the um, status sell, how would you feel if you pulled up at school and all the other dads or moms looked at you and said, ooh, that's amazing. Where did you get that? So how did you, how would you feel? So write that question down for yourself. So when I, when I put the comments here, it's usually that I, that I want people to interact and I know we've got a lot of stuff here and I wanna to come to questions at the end. So if you have a question about, and we're gonna to go to a little bit of guru practice after this, but if you have something you wanna ask me about the guru status, make sure you just put it down and we'll come to it at the end so we can kind of have all the questions gathered up at the end because I find it's easier to do that if that's cool with everybody. So you as a guru, you just need to make your, and I talk about this, you need to make your phrases better. You need to start to point people towards asking them and my, my favorite mentor always asked me so how would it make you feel if that happened and you say okay well I would feel so how would you feel if you got that promotion well I would feel like I was respected because I did my job okay cool so you were respected and then you did your job what are you going to do to make sure you capitalize on that okay then you answer and and you get once again, I'm a three person, you get three layers into it. So if you're selling to somebody and you've asked them that, that question, so who has, who has a good question? I think we should open it up for this part is, who thinks that they have a good question that they could put back to us that we could go a little bit further into their, their question and see how the guru could kind of pull that question to make sure we're going from customer to client. Just type in the chat if you wanna offer something up and I'll unmute. So if I, if I unmute David's type something on unmute David. There we go, David. Oh yeah. Go, David. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm from Rapid Prototyping, which is a low volume manufacturer. Yes. And, um, my startup is to do with 
limited edition sculptures for it's a bit of a niche market called art toys or urban toys or whatever. Yes. They're, they're plast made of plastic, but it's the same as porcelain or bronze. Um, it's grown and grown. There's a lot of it out there. Some is high end, some isn't. Okay. I suppose, you know, what? It, was, it would be something that I would ask on my, my website after I've launched um, the first few products. Yes. Uh, and literally you know, say to the customer, what do you want next? It's based around a theme, but um, I suppose, yeah, the question is, what do you want me to make? So is that so how, how do you change that into a, a um, oh, yeah, more generalized? So, so a feeling yeah. statement. So let's let's work that into a feeling statement right now. So um, how would you feel if you had the image of your favorite ever pet in your garden? I, I don't know what I don't know what you're manufacturing so i'm not trying to to, to steer yeah, anything that's fine, yeah. is, is that fine so so it's how, how would you feel or how, how would you feel if you if your favorite memory of a movie or your pet or whatever it was you could see it every day as you woke up in the morning and looked out in your garden okay yeah i like that so and then what and so you use you, yours yours because it's a the website but so how you really need to move people into an emotive state so that those two things and having three different emotions that are there either mm -hmm. your favorite time so emotion as in um 1966 world cup win whatever that is or an emotive time with a, a memory of of a children a children and a, and a space in their garden or so, somewhere else or or typically an animal. So yeah. I think that you can really bring people back into how would you feel if you could have X visible on a daily basis? Okay, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm thinking um, imagination because it's of a, sort of a bit cyberpunk, uh, but unique, you know, unique story. So, uh, but it is the, a figure on a motorbike, which, you know, lots of different people like those sorts of things, but. Cool. So yeah, I think, I think your, yours, I, uh, we're gonna, when we move into the next part of it, cause your, your harder part is getting, finding out if your people are customers and that your, your people are more customers. It doesn't mean you can't be emotive and you can't use this, but yours might also be looking at this um, to distribute through other people. And then you can have, then you can use your 3G skills better with um, distributor groups because you can use feel and the, the other the other things we move on. But no, that's okay. perfect. So, Thanks. Uh, no, no worries at all. That's cool. So, um, so this this is the one of the not the hardest to this is the hardest of the three to master, um, but it's the easiest I think to understand and the easiest one to use because you're just asking questions about how something makes somebody feel. So if, and I see Chris up here on the side and he talks about it all the time is how would you feel if your clients walked in and saw that your shop floor was, was amazing and they, they talked about you and then the, the cleanliness and how well you ran a business, you know? So it's, how would you feel? So really you have to practice. You need two or three of those questions to ask each of your, your client bases. The next one is the guide. So we, we talked a little bit about this, but in this, this video, it's, it basically says, which, which way should we go? And he walks forward and sometimes you just get it wrong. And we're gonna go that way, it's hitting there with the shovel. But overall, the guide, the guide's traits are choosing a direction of travel you want to get to somewhere. You want to get to make sure you have your retirement plan in place. You want to get to have a hundred more new clients. You you want to make sure that you have um, a business that has three employees and this much turnover. So you know the direction you're going. You as the guide need to ask that person, okay, we're going that way. How are we going to get there? Because you can go, if you're, if you're traveling to somewhere, you can travel there by, by boat, by train, walking, plane, all that type of stuff. So how are you going to get there? 
what are you going to do if you encounter things en route? So problems, obstacles, windfalls, changes in the direction, and the questions you need to ask here are how can we so you're taking your you're, you're taking your client side of the table so you are both sitting there looking out to the mountain in the distance that mountain in the distance is the place where you're going to you're sit, looking at the people beside you who are your clients your customers and you're saying how are we going to get there i believe that, that we should probably take this trail and sleep two times before we get there. We'll set up camp twice and we'll get there. What do you think? Okay. Well, they think, well, you, you, you're pretty good at this, but I think we should only we should do it in one night. Then you say, okay, well, how much food should we pack? Well, I believe this and I believe this. So you're working in tandem with your client. So you're trying to make a decision with them using your education and everything else. Doesn't mean that you don't already know the answer. But the more you can guide them and they get that answer. And I don't know if, if you have kids or a spouse or, or brother or sister or something else, but you'll tell somebody something. And I, my, my sister, Brianna, you'd, I'd tell her, I'd say, Brie, I think you should go out and you know maybe go to Cozumel next year in Mexico. It's a great, great location. She says, I don't, I don't know if I really want to go there. But she goes out with her friends and hangs out. And they tell her, hey, Brie, you should go to Cozumel. It's amazing. She didn't listen to me at all, but then when she, they said it, she goes, oh yeah, BD, I'm going to Cozumel now. It's great. It sounds like a phenomenal thing. And I said, well, but I told you to do that. So sometimes if you're telling somebody to do something and not asking them and letting it be their decision and them helping themselves to the answer you want to get to, you, you arrive at difficulties because you're pushing against them. So you need to both be sitting on the same side of the table or sitting on the same side of the problem, looking out and trying to find something together. So these questions, and I, we're gonna write down one guide question. And these usually begin with how, not how would you feel, but like, how would you do this? What would be the best way to get to this or which? Which, which choice of these three do you think we should go with so write down one thing that you could use on a how, a which, or a what question for getting your clients to be standing on the same side of the problem as you and point them in that direction. So what questions make you, questions or comments make and phrases make you a better guide? It's, and, I, and, I, and I walk through these with the, with the what's, the how's and everything else. But this, this really starts to come down to you as a guide know that you've taken yourself from a, a number of paths to get to the mountain to two or three of the best choices. So part of your goal as a guide is to in the process of the clients and customers that you're working with, narrow down their choices. Narrow down so that they're still making the decisions, but from the three best options that you know about. So if you've got a type of if you've got a type of book or a type of glass that somebody should be using or a type of product that they should be putting in or software. So if you work with CRM systems, then you know the two or three that are the best in the markets that you deal in. And you're just saying, well, here's, here's some research. You look at it, and then let's make the decision together. Because this one's a little bit more expensive, but this one has less features. This one has this, this has this. So let's make those decisions together. Ultimately, they're looking to you as the 3G advisor to kind of point them in the direction. But the more that they can buy into the purchase, the more that they can get in there and it becomes an assisted purchase and not a sale, the more buy-in they'll have to getting to that goal. So we've had the guru, we've had the guide, and now we move on to the hardest one of all, gladiator. So let 
that play, I play that all the way to the end. He stands at the, the crowd, and if you, if you haven't seen the movie, and I'm sure most of you have, Russell Crowe stands there and he says, are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? That's what you're here for. A lot of times, the stuff that we do is not entertaining. It's not fun. It's not a lot of things. Some people are, some people have great, great businesses of that. Sometimes the things we do are very utilitarian and we're not, we're not accepted for it or respected for it until later. But in business, when somebody comes to you and you give them an invoice or a quote, or you're trying to deliver something to them, you're trying to protect something for them. So when, when we're dealing in my financial advice business, people give you a goal of retiring in a certain way. I can't, I can't control the markets. I can't control all of their, their spending habits or anything else. But what I can control is the goal that they've given to try to allow me to make sure that they can get to their, their goal of retiring on X amount of pounds, uh, that if they weren't there, that their spouse is taken care of. The same thing happens in the coaching business. So in the stuff that we're talking about with, with Daniel and Beck and the stuff that we do, it's somebody says, I want to get to this goal of this much turnover in this much time. And you, you have to be realistic about it. But if somebody strays from what they've given you and they start to go, well, you know what? We were going to sell to doctors and accountants and lawyers. And the next week, because that was that was hard and they weren't going in the right direction, now they start selling to teachers and construction and graphic designers. Somebody that's given you a brief that says this, and they've told you to do it, you have to act like the gladiator and say, no, you told me that we were going in this direction. So if you're going to change that, we're going to have to change everything else. And that's very expensive. It's also very time consuming and it breaks your focus. So the gladiator is standing there. We're not there for entertainment. We're there to make sure that we protect the goal of the client. Sometimes in a, in a product, it's not that, that exciting or it's, that, it's harder to control. But when it comes to services or something that you'll deliver over time and they're a client, then you need to make sure they stick to their guns. It doesn't mean you can't deviate a little bit, but the gladiator is, is there. So the question that you need to ask, it, this, is, this is pretty much one I, I just give you, is what's, what's our goal? And what's <laughs> essentially, what can I do to you if you deviate from that goal? You know, how are we going to make sure you stay on track for whatever goal that we set out to do together? You've hired me to do this to protect your floor, to make sure that you're your video game looks the best to make sure that your website's amazing, your wedding pictures are this, you've told me to do this, and now you're trying to tell me that I want this picture here, it's gonna be horrible, and you've hired me as the professional, so I am trying to protect you now. So you have to put that question out there, is what, what thing are we go? what direction are we going, what item are we trying to protect, or what are you entrusting me with, and, what, what's the forfeit if we change, change direction? These are very difficult to get to, and they'll be for a limited number of people. So you need to ask permission as you're going along. You need to be able to explain this process to them. And it's funny, you, you, can, use, you can use the 3G, you can use the guru, the guide, and the gladiator, or however you feel comfortable with. But if you explain it to these guys and you say, this is why I'm doing this, I will tell you when I will use this. So I will tell you, um, you, know, you if, if you're subtle enough, it'll be really good. But you, you can use the guru without really having to them to know that you're using the guru. The guide comes in pretty natural. But the biggest one that you have to use so sparingly is the gladiator. Because if you get mad at people all the time or you get you keep using that, it, it stops being pertinent and starts being aggressive. So you, you need to have that buy-in from what, what you're doing, but you don't want it to be used too often. So guru, guru and guide can go in anytime. But you have to make sure that you're interchanging them 
that if you're asking all the guru questions and he asks 20 guru questions, how are you feeling? How are you doing this? You don't ever get in a direction. You get, you get the picture of where they want to feel and how they want to feel, but you don't get a direction. The gladiator use sparingly. A lot of times you don't have to use them at all, but the guru and the guide, you have to work through and make sure that, that people are bought into what you're doing. The 3G advisor really starts to move forward. Let me just, I've got to move the, the box over to the other side. But so when you get, get to the power of the 3G, so you've got the players, you've got the guru, the guide and the gladiator. You need to ask permission. You need to say, if we're gonna be moving in this direction to get you to whatever this thing is that we're going to buy in the future, or we're gonna do, or we're going to purchase, then will you allow me to help you get there? Get the buy-in. Will you allow me to help you get to X goal? Will you allow me to have the the best, you know, to see Paul my life right, so Mo's here, so it's, will you allow me to have the best, most recyclable cutlery or, or pottery in that you can for your business? So you need to ask permission. Then you need to make sure that in your performance that you're showing them for a client, you need to show what value you're adding by asking them these questions. You have to know this before you come in. So if the value with, with anything else, you're, you're saving that energy, time, and focus. Energy for most businesses is money, but it's not always money that you make. Sometimes it's money that you save. So it's the, that, that's the energy. That performance is saving them time also. But the biggest one, and I think that this is, this is the real caveat in this, this overall process, and the power and the threes come into it, is having that focus. So your business should be focused on three strands, three types of companies, three or three channels. And if you can get your clients to do the same thing, then you can go very far using the, the 3G method. And if you do this right and you practice it on a regular basis with your employees, your friends, your family, it, it really helps. If you can think about one or two or three questions from each of these, whether you're, you're dealing with a family issue, whether you're dealing with selling more stuff, whether you're dealing with talking to a boss, if you can think of one or two or three of those questions that you would ask to make sure that you get understanding from that other person, you start to approach problems together. So even if you're going into a contract dispute, if you can put the contract on one side of the table and you sit on the other side of the table and say, you know what, Chris, or you know what, Carolyn, if we both sit over here, the problem we have is that there's there's 100% of the company or 100% of this sat across the table and you want 100% and I want 100%. How do we make sure that we both get a fair or an equivalent amount to the effort or whatever we're doing in this? How can we make that happen? And how will you feel if you walk away with what you think that you want. So if you can start to work those things into your overall communication, you will have a level of prowess that, that people will know, oh, that person asked some really good questions. And I didn't even think about it in that respect, or I didn't even think about it in that way. And the big thing is if you're doing something where at that limited amount of time where you have to invoke the powers of the gladiator, to protect somebody. They might not feel good about it right then, but you'll know that you've protected them and kept them in the way that they, they promised that you should, you should allow or be allowed to help them get to. So that prowess, and you'll feel comfortable with that. It takes little bits at a time to get into these. You have them all inside of you. It's practicing them and moving them forward. So when I, when I talked about it before, the, and we'll, we'll talk about questions, got five books that I've, three that I've written, three that I've written and two that I've co-authored. And so there's a lot of resource out there for you. And the reason I did these is because I don't have time to have a coffee with everybody in the whole world. So a lot of times I wrote them in a, in a weird order. True Gravity is all about networking and leveraging your networks. 
grow, sell, and retire is, is literally about that, is building a business that you can walk away from and still earn money from. And then the assisted purchase is there, which is the one we talked about today, walks you through building a good client base, using the guru, the guide, and the gladiator to make clients for life, to make sure that when you're going through your assisted purchasing process, not a sales process, but your assisted pur purchasing process, that you are saving yourself energy, time, and focus, and doing the same thing for your clients, customers, saving them energy, time, and focus. So we do a lot of this stuff through, through BEC. Um, it's, it's there. So now I can open it up to questions and we can have some fun. So hopefully that was, that was enjoyable for you. The book comes out, <laughs> we're working with the people. So it's, it's already done and at the printer, we're just in, in the, the quarantine safe at home place we're at right now. It's hard to get them sorted out. But in general, you guys were my first audience since the, the books come out on this. Awesome, thank you very much. So um, if, if you have questions, uh, could I just ask if, if you just pop in the chat to let us know that you, you've got a question and then we'll unmute you. David, I'm going to go to you first because you, you typed a question whilst we were speaking about some of the Gladiator stuff. Uh, David? Yeah, hello. Um, what you were saying about, um, you know, staying on the sort of path that you um, have originally chosen, you know, as if, you know, you've employed me to do this. Well, there's only me doing what I'm doing. And... Um, Recently, like a couple of days ago, uh, technical things have happened and it's been dragging on for a while. So I've decided, or I decided, right, make something a bit simpler, um, a bit of a kind of a, doesn't really apply to what I'm doing, but a bit of a sort of a seven day start of attitude. Um, and I've decided to, I've got so far with this, project is product which is complicated i'm not using cad or cnc or um 3d printing i'm doing it all by hand okay um and i've decided right stop work on that okay and, and do something simpler which applies to a slightly different market as well there's still people that want to collect something okay david uh, what, what's the could not just what's what's the question because i want because uh, i think i can take well, this Am I am I doing the right thing? Because I've always had the attitude of doing um, the best I can do, and and whatever it is I'm going to do is a really high quality product, which is that bit different to what is already available, which is what makes it stand out. So the hard, the hardest part about and we do this all the time in the creative sector and the gaming sector and things like this is that the hard you need to get MVP out there, minimum viable product. If you don't. I'm not trying to teach granny to suck eggs, but you need to get the minimum viable product out there because it's really hard to sell art. Yeah. It's, it's easier to sell things that feel like art that are a bit more mass produced. And I, I don't, I'm not trying to tell you how to run your business because I don't know anything about it. So this is the, the biggest thing you have is trying to sell, trying to sell a single painting from a painter is much harder than selling 20 paintings from a painter because you now have a library that can either be resold, repurposed, purposed, or moved on. So, so you might be doing the right thing, but don't feel like when you're building a business that giving up a little bit of the exact creativity is damaging it because you gotta be commercial first. So you need to be a business first, creative second. Unless, you've got, unless you can sell a million pound piece of artwork today, then you could be art first and creative second. You know, you could be creative first and art second or business second. So that, I can talk with you more about it later, but, but in general, you're not doing the wrong thing. A business needs to make money or solve client needs for a lot of clients, and then you can save the world. Yeah, yeah, okay. Is that cool? So yeah, that's let's, fine, that's what I thought. So perfect. Let's let's take it. If you want, Daniel and I, or we, we could take it up offline. So it's it's fine. I'm I'm cool with that. Okay. So. Yeah, that would be good. That would. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Any other questions? If you just just let me know in the chat, and I'll I'll unmute. Okay.
Just give me nope. a second. To tie it. No worries. It's okay. So one of the things I've been working on with Daniel, and I, and I want you guys all to think about, and there, there's some stuff we're, we're talking about right now. We have, I don't know if Daniel's told you guys about our startup sprint, but we have, we have some, some of you have already been through the program, but if you know anybody out there that's, that wants to start up a business and wants to move things forward, um, we've got a, an online accelerator that we've, we've put together that starting you know how many when does it start in a couple of weeks so yeah. yeah it starts on the 6th of may um designed for people who have um kind of just started or are thinking about starting a business um kind of quite a valuable month-long package of support and we have so in, in that it's i think it's it's about 200 quid and but you get you get mentoring every week um, for, for a limited amount of time and you get um, courses online. So it gets a lot of these questions that like David asked, gets those answered um, fa fairly straightforward. So it's, it's good. Well, I've got two, two questions here. So I'm gonna start with uh, Davis. Yeah. Hi, uh, I have a question about unique selling point. Uh, mm -hmm. It regards like a electric motorcycle, which is, uh, re which is made from reused parts. So. I'm struggling a bit how to find the unique selling point and to bring to market. That would be, would be great to know about the ways how to approach customers and as well. Uh, uh, so finding. Unique selling point. I think that's that's a that's a bigger discussion, but but it, you know, it, it's it's yeah. a much it's a much bigger discussion and people have been <laughs> doing that. But but I think my 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 biggest thing when you're talking about all of these so. There, there are people that have spent, that there's there's no real new market. You're just taking market from mm. somebody else. So you're mm. either taking market from Harley Davidson or you're taking market from the push bike or, you know, so what, what you need to do is you need to figure out the best USPs from the, the things that you're smashing together. So you're smashing together the motorcycle industry, the green travel industry, not walking, um, mm. going against, so, Use everybody else's best unique selling points and smash it together mm. and come up with how you feel and what how you would want to do. So unique selling point for me is is that 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 thing that truly makes it I call it your thing. So it's I get rid of the unique yeah. selling, USP yeah. drives me nuts because it's just a, it's a it's a good term, but the, your thing. It's, it's got to be because it's got to be how you feel when you get on the bike. So Harley Davidson, it, I know that's your, your competition, but mm -hmm. you, you get on it and it's how you feel when you get on there with the, with the motor going and you can hear it and you, it's noisy and it's the people that you hang out with. So yeah. your thing is you've got Harley Davidson for, for people that don't want to destroy the world. You know, it's, yeah. you know, so it's that, that feel. So use somebody else's unique selling points. And mm -hmm. they've spent millions and millions of pounds to, to figure that out and use the best parts of those to put it together to get to something you feel like. And your USP mm -hmm. will change. Your thing will mm -hmm. change over time unless mm -hmm. you get it perfect from the outside. So mm -hmm. always know that things are always in flux and always flowing. But but there's some things on in my in, in Grow, Sell, and Retire that, that's one of the levers. Your thing is one of the levers. So mm. you, there's there's a whole chapter in there about trying to get to something that your unique selling point, what you believe in, is not always something that somebody will pay for. So you just mm -hmm. need to make sure that that's that's there, or pay what it's worth. Not always not pay for, but not pay what it's worth in your mm -hmm. mind. So awesome. it's, it's a great yeah. great question. So we can take yeah. some more of that stuff up offline too. But that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you for bringing that up. Okay. Thanks. Cool. Uh, next, I am going to Caroline, um, if I can find her. There we go, Caroline. Hi, thank you very much. And thank you, Bart, for a brilliant session. Really, really useful. Um, we've got a fledgling business that we've just put together where well, we well, we've got it ready to launch before all of this happened. So we've kind of put it a little bit on ice. But the three of us who have come together have been successful Freelancers, we're all very experienced both in um, academia and, um, and business. 
but we've been slightly struggling over what we um, what we should really prioritize and and promote initially um, is it our production services um, or is it our training services um, and you know not necessarily going into the detail of those two specific areas but you know, having those two distinct areas, what would your advice be in terms of making sure that we can promote two without us watering down our expertise, if you like? Um, I think instead of choosing the product you sell, you choose the channel you're selling to. Okay, okay. So choose, choose if it's engineers, if it's architects, if it's manufacturing, whoever it is, you cho cho don't choose the product, choose your channel, choose the channel that has the most expendable cash with the least, the lowest barrier to entry. Yeah. Um, and that's also might be getting the least amount of attention from your sector. Okay, okay, great. Okay. So you got, in, in the beginning, you just have to go where the cash is flowing. And that's that's the hardest part is sometimes and like we talked about with David is that sometimes you, you have to jeopardize your your art for 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 commercialism. And if you can't do that, then then the art should be a hobby and you should go get a job and not being mean. Just that's that's my thing is you have to make sure that you're taken care of, because if you're working from it, there's there's abundance and scarcity. And if you've heard all this stuff before, it's. If you're operating from scarcity, which a lot of people are right now, you, you, you won't do anything, you won't buy anything, you won't plan anything. If you're operating from abundance and thinking that, and this is where I've gotten rid of, I hate lockdown, I hate hashtag lockdown, um, I'm safe at home. It's, it, it's not the most fun thing in the world, but I'm safe at home. So I'm hashtag safe at home. And that's, that's where we have to get that mindset. So it's the same thing when we're talking about what we're selling or what, how we're interacting with people we're trying to make sure that we're going to where the money is and where we can provide the most return on investment. So really, really that's what you have to do, Caroline, is you have to make sure that- Right. You, I, you, those those two, no, I mean, our, our, our struggle is, I mean, obviously working in the media sector and so on, our, our industry has fallen off a cliff. I yeah. had 25 grand's worth of work lined up that just evaporated overnight. Um, and, and, and actually production, yeah, you can do online stuff. We're going to see some great stuff coming out of the broadcasters. Tonight is going to be a great example of how we can get around to be creative around what, you know, tools we can engage with at the moment. Yep. But, um, you know, that, that we have to get together to a certain extent to do what we do. It's a collaborative, collective process. Um, and I, you know, I am going to do some training online. I've, I've still, I shifted that that I was going to do with university students onto um, Zoom and so on, uh, which is fine. And it, I, I mean, I think we're, we're all getting used to doing it like this and it will fundamentally change, I think, what, how we do it. But nevertheless, you know, TV shows have all ground to a halt and we have to get together to make those. Um, and and I'm str I am struggling with, with where, I think I'm at the point where it's not quite clear yet how we're going to emerge out of this and how things are going to change. We know things are going to change, but I'm struggling with thinking about certain aspects that simply can't change. I've also just sat and done a um, finance application with my son who is, uh, has a place at university in September and he is desperate. We've just been having a discussion about um, he, you know, going to university for an 18, 19 year old is the experience as well as the course. So telling him that it's likely to be online and, and delivered that way is, is breaking his heart really, because it's all the other stuff wrapped around it that is important to him as well. It's yeah. quite an interesting space we're in at the moment. And I'm just trying to see from a business point of view how we might emerge out of this um, and still be able to deliver the services that we could have done a month ago. It's no, it's it's, it's perfect, and, and it's a, it's a challenge, and it's a challenge for everybody. And I and I think and it's it's that's the hardest part is. But you need to know is how how would you feel when you come out the other side if you had a plan if you if you had a plan that that would weather the storm. So you'll have two or three different you'll have two or three paths right now out in front of you. So yeah. you have to figure out which which of those paths you're going to take. 
doesn't mean it's the right path and doesn't mean you can't change those paths as you're going along, but you need to choose those. But you need to ask yourself, how would I feel if, if I had chosen the right path or if I'd chosen the wrong path? And if you have, and this is, and I was talking to Chris about this earlier today and Daniel also, is I believe that everybody needs to have their, their exit plan for when we come out of this. You need, yeah. to plan, you need to plan yourself up to that day where they open the doors, but also you don't want to be calling everybody and trying to sell them everything on that day because they're going to be settling back into their life. So you have to have your exit. You have to have your exit plan. So everybody needs to put that in place. Um, and, and and we're talking a lot about that. So put your plan in place. It doesn't mean it's perfect, but it's much easier to work around the plan than it is to make a plan in, in when, when you're in the middle of the battle. That's, that's and that's, really, yeah, that's exactly where my, my head is at the moment, exactly where my head is. And it will become clearer, but at the moment, it's a bit of a mush. Yeah, but just, just make just make the plans. I mean, Winston Churchill, he, you just go back to Winston Churchill's planning. To, that's you, you have to have the plan there. But then also it's it's Mike Tyson says that everybody has a great boxing plan until they step into the ring and get punched in the face. So <laughs> it's. So, yeah. there. so we're, we're coming to we're coming to the end of this. I want to make we, we'll stay on for as long as Daniel wants to stay on. But let's make sure. So thank you very much for the question. It's a great question. Hopefully everybody got a little bit of something out of it. Yeah, thank you very much, Caroline. Uh, does anybody else have a question? If you, if you want to just let us know uh, whilst we're waiting to see if any anyone else has a question. Uh, do you just want to let them know one about the sessions we've got coming up with with Minto over the past next couple of weeks? And Perfect. obviously where they can get the books from if they're interested in your books. Well, on, on the screen, bardaltonconsulting.com. You can get the books from there. Um, they're on Amazon. Uh, I've got lots of free resources on there. Free is always everybody's favorite price. So there's lots of free resources on there um, and, and making that all happen. Um, working, with, working with BEC and doing all the stuff we're doing with Birmingham Enterprise Community and the Forward Accelerator. Uh, we've got Mentor Dial. Um, next week on or it's next week, the 29th and the 6th, talking about how to use Zoom and gain empathy. So the guru, you remember it was talking about empathy. Mentor Dial was the, the if you know, Redken hair care products, L'Oreal. Um, he was the head of marketing for them for, for years, 17, I believe it is. Uh, he's written a book called Future, um, Future Proof, and he's written another one called Artificial Empathy, which talks about technology and actually how AI will never replace humans. Um, but he's going to be talking about how to use Zoom and how to engage with people and get feedback. And, and we, we talked a lot about this today with everybody. How do you do that when you're when you're far apart, distance, and you can't see anybody and you only see letters and names and faces and a little bit of expression? So how do you gain empathy through them? So we've got that on the 29th and the 6th. If you want, and that's at four o'clock and it'll be on Zoom. If you want more information on that, just contact Daniel because we've got we've got the logins for you. Um, and the only thing we want you to do there is Minter has a survey that we want you to have because he's going to do uh, the, the survey is all about empathy and he wants to be able to apply the survey to all of us on the on the calls. So and he's a great, great guy. But in general, thanks for coming on today. I don't know if Daniel, if we have anybody, if not, then then we can we can. Log no, on. no, no final questions. Um, as Bart said, please do get in touch if you if you need anything else. Yeah, and I think we'll we'll finish off for today. Lovely. Thank you very much, Bart. Perfect. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Make it a great day. Not have a great day.